Hello? Oh, wait. I don't know. My camera's working. How do I flip my camera? One? <laughs> Hi everyone joining, I'm Jay Wells. I'm the author of the Prosper's War series, including Dirty Magic, Cursed Moon, Deadly Spells. I also wrote the Sabina Kane series. Hi everyone, so many people. Um, we are in my office, although it looks kind of like we're in a club because of this, uh, <laughs> this curtain behind me. Uh, this is actually the doorway to my office because I will show you, hold on. Um, my office is off of my kitchen and my laundry room and I get to close this curtain uh, so I can hide all the dishes and laundry that inevitably pile up in those rooms. Um, but I usually keep it open because it's easier for me to get to the coffee maker, which is very important in an office. Um, so here we are. This is actually, this room is actually my uh, formal dining room that I turned into, here I'll turn and say, um, I turned this into my office a couple of years ago after having kind of a fancy office that I set up in um, a guest bedroom upstairs, but I made it so fancy that every time I walked in, I felt like I was pretending to be an author and not actually just being a writer. So I moved it down here, which is a lot more comfortable. Um, and this was a formal like living dining room situation. So I put this big bookcase up and we'll kind of look at the books that are on that in a minute. Um, so let's get started on the tour. It's really not that exciting because it's really just like a place for me to write. <laughs> this is a, my desk is actually an old dining room table that my mother gave me uh, after college, but I love it because it's very large and I can drop the leaves and um, I can, you know, write on it or I can spread out and edit on it, which is great. Um, and I do my little, you know, I have my laptop and my bigger screen so I can really spread things out. And that glowy thing is one of those weird Himalayan salt lamps. Um, I got it because it kind of creates this nice light, but apparently it, I don't know, like equalizes the negative ions or something. Very woo woo. Um, if you know what it does, tell me because I just like it because it's pretty. And I always have candles on my desk because I light them when I write. It's kind of like my signal to my brain that it's time to work. Um, so I always have a bunch of different ones up there that I, I write. I light when I write. Um, these are pretty cool. I have some cool artwork in here. Uh, this here is a poster that a book club made for me. Sorry about the reflection. Um, Books That Bite is the book group, and they made this poster for me when I when uh, Green Eyed Demon came out, and I came to talk to them. Um, and this piece, along with the one on the other side, sorry about the glare, um, I got at a gallery in New Orleans. Let's see if you can kind of see. I have a thing for birds, so I like art that's got, it's kind of creepy with birds in it. And of course, this is the cover of Dirty Magic. Um, which is my Kate Prospero series. And this is my favorite, hi Clint. Uh, this is my favorite cover. Um, hold on, let me see if I turn this light down. Um, because it's got a lot of personal things in it. As you can see, there's a, an alchemy set here and there's there and the little palmistry hand. Those actually belong to the cover designer, Lauren Panapinto, and she brought them to the photo shoot um, and then the necklaces that Kate's wearing were done by Rock Love Jewelry, um, and they're like alchemical symbols. I actually owned one of those necklaces before I wrote the book, and then I found out that Lauren was friends with the owner, Allison, of that seer of that uh, company, and we she donated those necklaces for the cover, um, which I think is so cool because it adds a really personal dimension to the covers, and it's just beautiful. Um, and then this is the other piece I got in New Orleans. I'm going to try and get close so you can see it. More birds, more creepy birds. And there's like a skeleton here. There's one over here. And it says, where the two trees meet. And you can see that, that cool like doorway. I love that. I think I'm going to write a story about that one day. <laughs> I love that piece. Um, and then these funky china cabinets. Oh, thank you. Hi, Clint. 
Um, these china cabinets were already here when we moved in and then I painted them kind of a dark brown with like a teal blue interior just to kind of make them look cooler, I guess. Um, but here we've got, this is a pocket Jamie. I don't know if anyone out there is a fan of Outlander, but I am. And a lot of my girlfriends are, and I had like a girls weekend and made us all pocket Jamies. Um, and so he watches over me while I write. Um, and this is a picture of my son who is now 12, but he was like two there and he looks so drunk. Can you see how drunk that child looks? that I keep it there because it makes me laugh. And then that's an embarrassing picture of my husband that's probably gonna get me in, uh, divorced by the end of the day when he finds out that I showed it to you. But his mother made him do competitive roller skating when he was a kid. And that's him all dolled up in his cowboy outfit. So it was nice being married while it lasted. Um, and so this is, this is kind of a hodgepodge of things in this cabinet. Um, a lot of these are foreign editions of my books. These are, French versions of um, Silver Tongue Devil. Um, that is French version of Green Eyed Demon. British copies of Blue Blooded Vamp and Silver Tongue Devil. German. These are just extra American copies. Arcs of Dirty Magic and Polish versions of Silver Tongue Devil and then an audio. And there's Mr. Skelly. He's a fancy skeleton. Uh, it's kind of a disco skeleton, I guess. Um, that's Jasper. He's my house monkey. Um, and these are cool. These are old, like, apothecary bottles that I got to hold all my office supplies in. And then my son made these cool labels. This one says bat intestine and demon joints, which are rubber bands, obviously. And then witch fingers are thumbtacks. Um... And then this is, this is something I'm very proud of. It's my, I can't really see it. It's my RT Book Reviews Reviewer's Choice Award for the Best Urban Fantasy of 2012 uh, for Blue, Blue Blooded Vamp. I actually just yesterday got back from this year's RT, um, which was really fun, and my book, Dirty Magic, was nominated. Uh, it didn't win, but it, I think that award was won by Alona Andrews, who's pretty awesome, so I don't mind losing to her. Uh, and that's my novella, Meridian 6, um, that is a series that I do, of, it's uh, like a post-apocalyptic vampire series. Um, this is my messy stack of research books that I'm always referring to, um, and some papers I need to file, and some magazines I need to read. You can see I cleaned up for you. Um, and this is my bookcase, um, and this is not all of my books, I should tell you that. Um, it's also very messy, but this is mainly research and craft books that I keep, but it also, there's also just some fiction that I keep around, like here's some names you might recognize, Mike Cole, Shadow Ops, Breach Zone, Greg Van Eekouts, California Bones, Brian McCullen's Promise of Blood, and those three guys, I met them at Phoenix Comic Con last year, so I bought their books because they were so cool, and they happen to also be fantastic writers. Um, and then Choke by Chuck Palahniuk. I have no idea why it's there, but that is my favorite Palahniuk book. Um, some research stuff, craft books. Uh, I have a lot of Stephen King on these shelves because I've been researching, I've been reading a lot of his stuff for classes and for a book I'm writing. Um, Charles Bukowski poems because, you know, I'm really down with the Bukowski. Um, you know, there's just a lot of odds and ends. Like, there's a shelf that's got all sorts of Salem witch research books, because I had an idea that I wanted to write a Salem witch story, so I keep those around. Um, writing craft. There's my awesome, awesome Wonder Woman tote bag that I take to cons, and I carry all my swag in it. Um, I'm a huge Wonder Woman fan. Although, I'm not, a, I'm not like a geek fan for her, so don't quiz me on like her origin or story or whatever, but I just really like her. And this is a cool thing, uh, which actually has a lot to do with how I write. Um, this is a storyboard. And I, um, I'm a pantser, so that means that when I sit down to write, I, um, I just kind of go by the seat of my pants. But eventually the story needs a plot, and that's where the storyboard comes in. So what I do, and I can show you this, this is for a horror novel I'm writing. Um, I basically write out the beats for each scene, 
and I kind of put them in order on here. The pink ones are um, scenes I still have to write on this book, although this board needs to be updated because I'm working on rewrites right now. But basically what I do, as you can see, I wrote Act 1, Act 2, A and B, and Act 3, and then I just kind of lay out the plot. Um, it's interesting, though. I know a lot of authors who use storyboards, and we all lay them out differently. But that's why it's such a great tool, because you can adjust it to whatever format you need. Like, I know Vicki Pedersen, who's a wonderful urban fantasy and thriller author, orients her board vertically, and she thinks I'm crazy for using it horizontal. And I like the little wings, because I can put notes and stuff. Um, but that is actually very, very important to my process of writing, because it helps keep me on track. Um, now this thing is the other reason that my office is in this room. It looks like a TV armoire, but it's actually what we call the barmoire. As you can see, we have cocktails written on it. Uh, it's an old TV armoire that we turned into a bar. Um, I'm really not doing a lot for the reputation of writers to show you that this is within two feet of my desk. Um, but you know, we set this up so we could have a nice bar um, and we liked the piece of furniture so we didn't want to get rid of it. So I have my ubiquitous whiskeys. Uh, Bullet is my favorite whiskey or bourbon if you're wondering. Uh, I also like Basil Hayden's, I like a lot of them. Um, and then I just got this Balvenie 12 year uh, based on the recommendation of, hi, I'm in the mirror, uh, based on the recommendation of Nicole Peeler, um, who is kind of a Scotch whiskey expert-ish. She lived in Scotland for a long time and recommended it. It's delicious. I also, because I'm classy, have moonshine. Because, you know, sometimes you just need to drink from the mountains, I guess. I don't know. It's pretty good stuff. Um, and... I know that this makes me seem like a raging alcoholic. I actually don't drink during the day when I write, but at the end of the day, I've been known to have a nip or two. Um, what else? Oh, so let's go look at this. This is my other cabinet. This is kind of more like a cabinet of curiosities. Oh, this is fun. So a group of authors and I get together in Kentucky every year um, for like a girls weekend. We're supposed to be, we do write. No, we write, we write. Um, but we also decide that we need to dress up like pirate winches and get our picture taken because that's a look you really want spread around. So this is Nicole Peeler, Liliana Hart, and Molly Harper. And this is Heather Osborne, who's an amazing editor. And this is Judy, who is Molly's mom. She keeps us fed, and then that's me. And that's what authors do when they're on their free time. So this is more of this is more of my kind of arcane research collection. I have a lot of alchemy books in here. The glare is bad, but um, a lot of alchemy books in here. A lot of books on witchcraft. Um, this book is Edward Edinger is really big. I do a lot of research into his stuff because he studies psychology and alchemy, and so I use him a lot in my Prosperous War books because they're the magic system is based on alchemy. Um, and I should probably clarify that even though I own all of these books, I actually am, I'm not like a witch or a gypsy or anything. I just am really fascinated by the arcane. Um, and there's a palmistry hand that I got. It's like the one that's on the cover of Dirty Magic. And there's a little phrenology skull because everybody needs one of those. There's a cover of Carney Punk, which is a fantastic anthology I was in. With these awesome people, Kevin Hearn, Sean McGuire, Rob Thurman, Rachel Kane, Jennifer Eastat, Nicole Peeler. Um, my story was The Werewife, which is about a woman who gets bitten by Jojo the dog-faced boy and turns into a werewolf. Um, super fun anthology. Um, I also have this creepy um, candle, Lilith, goddess of feminine power. Um, I got this at an art, uh, like, um, I don't know. What do you call those? You know, one of those arcane stores in New Orleans that sells like voodoo stuff and candles. And I, you know, she's pretty. I guess you didn't think you were going to see boobs in this video, but yes, you are. 
There you go. Um, so I just have this funny stuff. And what's hilarious is that, and here's some more cool Halloween-y stuff that I, this is like a Halloween tree. It's got like potion ornaments and skulls and all sorts of, there's a little fun bat. And then I have Dracula, Jack is back, and there's Angel. Um, and I have all those things here. Let's do this again. Where am I? Nope. Huh. All right. Well, I was, oh, hi. Um, what's funny about all that is that I, at Halloween, I basically just clear out my office and move all of this um, arcane stuff like throughout the house. So if you had done this tour in October, this would have looked like a normal office from like a normal person. Um, but the rest of the year, it looks like, you know, Elvira's crypt or something with all my stuff. Um, and I actually have to tell people like we had, um, <laughs> we had a, uh, a house sitter come stay with our dogs. And I had to tell her, like, I promise you, I'm a normal person. I just like creepy stuff in my office because I was worried she was going to walk in here and be like, what? Um, so I think that's it. I mean, that's most of the stuff. Oh, I'm going to show you this room. There's not much in here now, but this is like what was the formal, hear me switch it. This is what was the formal like living room of my house. There's my front door. And now it's just kind of an empty room because we could never figure out what to do with it. But we're actually getting ready to turn this room into an, a library. So that entire wall, which is really tall, is going to be bookcases. Because we're going to take all of our books throughout the house and move them down here and make this like a cool reading room. Um, so we'll have to come back and do another one of these once we renovate. And then we also are repainting everything. So... If you have an idea for a color for my office, that orange wall is going to go away. That blurry. Oh, there we go. Uh, so if you have an idea for the color of that wall, let me know because I'm open for ideas. Um, anyway, that's where I write. I hope you guys had fun. Um, if you haven't read any of my books, now is a really great time to buy Dirty Magic, that book right there. It's on sale on ebook for $2.99 for the rest of the month. And then the next book is also on sale, and that book is Cursed Moon. And um, so it's a great way to try it out and see if you like it. I hope you do. And I hope you have a good day, and thank you for visiting my office. Bye.